I'm Peter Barton from the Class Association. I've flown in from the UK to support RS Fest Miami, the first time we've had a multi-class RS event on the east coast of the USA, which is really exciting. Um, we've got 34 RS Aeros here and about half of those are charter boats. And we're rigging up a new boat this morning. So we're gonna put a rudder on. When you get it brand new, you've got to put the bolt in. The outdoor's already on the rope, rudder, thread it through the top, tie it to the two to one purchase, little 20 mil block, just as standard there. What's unique about the aero is you line these pintles up, bang it down, and if you come around this side, it swaps. So the RS aero's got a blue button. We line these up, one hard bang to get it on. That's definitely on now, really fixed. And to release it, push the blue button forwards, and off it comes. Beautiful. It's brand new, so maybe it's a little bit stiff. It's easy. Fix. The magic blue button. So we tighten these up, this bolt up, just tight enough so that the rudder doesn't go smashing down if you're over concrete or something. So just if it's like that, as long as it doesn't get smashing down, that's fine. And to save space, very efficiently, the rudder goes all the way out like this. When you've got a really crowded dinghy park, it saves a lot of space. Popping the boom onto the mast is unique to the aero in that we've got this little groove here which retains the boom onto the mast spar. So we push that in and just when you get to that point, it clicks in. And now if this doesn't fall off, smash onto your deck and scratch your deck. Wow. So when we're rigging up, that is on there and you just need a positive pull to pull it off. And that obviously fixed the rig nicely into the boat together with the outhaul and the cunningham which also keep the boat keep the mast safely in the boat the standard main sheet is a nice fat one here which is great for the hands um, it's not overly long which means that beginners buying the boat are pretty safe not letting them sail all the way out downwind which is a cause of many a capsize so it's a really good standard main sheet but any keen racer will probably want their own main sheet which is probably recommended to be about up to 10 meters long this is a 6mm one, which is great for light winds. Maybe a 7mm is a good all-round size of main sheet. Straps are attached in two places. One right at the back, one in the middle. And that means that when you're hiking out on a really windy day and you get your weight right to the back of the boat, um, it, you can put one foot in the back strap, or if it's really extreme, even two feet behind the front attachment. So you've got both feet in the back of the strap and that really braces you in firmly, rather than it jigging around all over the place, which you might do if it wasn't braced in the middle. So right. it just makes it a little bit more rigid. It's a padded strap and it's got good adjustment. I'm charting an RS Aero, not my own one, um, but it's really important to get the toe strap the right length for what you're used to. So I've measured from the O of Aero on the logo to this black side deck here, and I know what my measurement is. And so I can get my charter at exactly how I like it at home. People use different lengths of toe straps and there's no right or wrong. People with long legs generally use tight toe straps. Um, people with short legs might have it a little bit longer. If you'd like a long toe strap, it's very important to keep your legs very straight and use this muscle to keep your legs really straight so that you keep your bum out of the water. Quite a low, low freeboard on the aero. So with a long toe strap, you've got to make sure you keep your bum out of the water. Yep. Let's do the toe strap. You can see it's threaded here, so we're just going to pull that out. Every aero comes as a bit of a kit, so you've got to rig it up. And that's a great opportunity to start loving your boat. So you've got about 90 minutes work to do to get all the ropes on your boat. And that gives you an opportunity on your new purchase to really learn to love it. And a general rule of thumb is probably if the end of the tow strap gets somewhere near the end of the Velcro, that's probably about right as a starting point, but it's all personal preference. Then we go to the back one. The bungee here goes through here and that keeps the toe strap up it's from a high point there. What you can also find, the arrows come with a bottle holder. So this is our built-in bottle holder. Put your bottle there. It's good to use a 500 milliliter bottle because that comes in about that tall. And then you can use a toe strap to hold the bottle in the boat. But also at the same time, that bottle is raising the bungee on the toe strap, which means it's a little bit higher. It's like a tent pole it'll just make it a little bit higher and tauter down the far end. So okay. 500 mil bottle's perfect. And you might want a little bit of bungee here, which is permitted in class rules, just to make sure that that bottle stays 
fixed. Okay. It's Very got to be good. capsized proof. So, we're going to thread this now. So that is your toe strap done, and whether you like long toe straps or short toe straps, the important thing is that when you're hiking out here, both of these should just come under tension about the same time. So I can see here, my back one is too tight relative to the front one. So I'll just take a little bit up on the front one and a little slacken off a little bit on the back one. Ah, uh, okay, so they're, they're a bit hand in hand. You do one, you gotta yeah. do the other. So I would go for the same tension in both. So I can see I just need a little bit more tension in the back one. And you're gonna have to adjust this when you're out there and see what you like. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> perfect, so they're about the same tension. So if it's too tight or too slack for you, try and do the same adjustment on both. And it's not critical, but it just makes sense that it should be on the same tension when you're leaning out. Okay. When you push the aero rudder down, you've just got to do two things. One is pushing the blade down by hand and at the same time taking up the slack. If you just pull this down, then you're putting the equipment under a little bit of stress, but also there's a chance this might just derail over the side and get jammed in here. So I like to push this down and at the same time take the slack up in the rope so the rope doesn't get all jammed. And when it gets, it's, we're a little bit too close to the ground here, when it gets all the way down, tie right there. And we've got a cleat at the back for the excess rope. So when that's all the way down, this rope will reach this cleat and it'll be nice and tidy. You haven't got to do a whole fiddle around here and tie a knot, which takes ages when you're coming back into a slipway, just when you don't want to be busy. Ah, uh, yes. So you can just drop it in the cleat and pull it out the cleat. Very quick and easy. So the RS Aero Daggerboard has got a big cutout in the bottom, um, modelled on uh, bird's wings after nature, I think. Uh, it's efficient, it's slim, it's silent at speed. No massive buzzing and humming when we go really fast. And the reason for that, we've had some people buy their arrows, think there's a design fault here. The back edge of this foil is beveled on one side only. It's asymmetric. And that means when we get planing really fast, we are silent. And that is perfect for screaming up behind people and not realizing we're coming, not giving the game away. So the arrow planes silently because both the daggerboard and the rudder have got a beveled edge on one side. All right, very nice. And then the uh, measurement as well is very, very yeah. helpful. We've got a scale here so you know exactly how far you're rigging it up. So if you read some blog of somebody in a country the other side of the world who says, if I'd like to sail down a run on number seven on the daggerboard, you can go straight to your own boat to the other side of the world and match that setting. Awesome. Awesome. It's quite a low drag center board. It's thin, it's got a big cutout at the bottom. It's got a fine shape, so there's a little drag here. We don't need to lift the board extensively when we're trying to keep the board down to, to promote power and planing. So we can leave the board down a little bit longer. And I, there's a theory there where if you want a close reach, leave more board down and you generate a bit more power to get the boat planing. This fluff on the top and the bottom of the centerboard case will stop the dagger board, have any danger of coming out of the boat, even if you turn the boat turtle capsized right over. Wow, but, okay, so is that the reason for this? Well, the reason for that is to keep it really rigid. It's from a racing perspective that it will be rigid in the case. It's also nice, obviously the board's not gonna scratch itself when it comes up and down, but there's enough friction there that it will not come out when the boat's upright. Wow, um, I never knew that they had that. That's having a bungee in a clip just means that you're all to safe. Maybe you come into the slipway and you drop your dagger board, at least you know it's attached to the boat. For every new RS Aero, you get your rigging pack, which comes in one of these nice branded RS bags, which is sail it, live it, love it. Um, here's all the ropes are in that bag. So you see you've got your main sheet here. Everything's labeled up with these little tags. RS Aero customer rope kit. All nicely labeled up. RS Aero customer pack, downhaul control line. Beautiful. On the RS Sailing website, there's RS Sailing store, which is like all the boats RS do, about 17 or 18 boats. The RS Aero is there. It's got its four rigs, five, six, seven, and nine. And in each part of that website, if you click on Aero in RS Sailing store, you can go to back of the boat, middle of the boat, front of the boat, rigging, transport, trolleys and trailers, covers, sails. Um, there's subsections there and you can find very easily usually with a picture of exactly the part you need. So I'm going to go outside of my red rope. That would normally go like that. And then these boats, ropes are apart. 
They go for these nice fittings that go through the deck. Out all on the inside, Cunningham on the outside. Now you've got two choices here. A lot of people, especially on the west coast of America, like to put the downhaul for the, to the, for the two front cleats. So you know if you're picking up a rope from the front cleat, it is the downhaul. And you know that if you're picking up the blue rope from the back cleat, it is the outhaul. The standard way, which just gives you a slightly untwisted deck lap layout, was a little twist there, just for aesthetic purposes. The original way, and I'm a bit of an original aero sailor at heart, um, is to have them reversed on either side, um, and that way you avoid the crossover here. So I have my downhaul on the front on one side and the downhaul on the back on the other side. So I get used to that and it's very natural for me after lots of sailing. And I, if in doubt, you just have to look at the color of the rope. Red for downhaul, blue for downhaul. We'll just make sure that that's good and that looks nice and clean to me. So that's your four to one downhaul system, which when this goes for the sale, it'd be an eight to one downhaul system. Control line take up, RS Aero customer rope kit. There's a length of bungee, which is maybe about two meters long, which is just gonna take up the excess line on the boat. This is obviously for the compass. Uh, yep. Clicks in. If someone does not have that mount, which I do not, yeah. are you opposed to doing the Velcro laser thing? No, um, the class rule says, so, so that we, we're not, meaning everybody has got to have the exact mount and the exact same compass so that a boat is accessible to other compass people because in different parts of the world different compasses may be favoured. In the UK we are very keen on the Tactic Micro Compass but in the USA there's other brands available. Sure. So we've kept it flexible. The class rule is that your compass must be mounted on the centre line of a boat between the mast and the kicking strap fitting. So the standard is on this button and the standard compass bracket clicks in there and it per fits per perfectly for a tactic compass. But if you haven't got that set up, as long as you mount it straight down the centre line, you can use Velcro and stick on. Can't drill any holes in the boat because that can affect the waterproofness and it's not a good idea. But with Glues and Velcros are some great products on the market now. You can get your compass as long as it's in the centre line, then we can still keep a very good on design profile. Toddy sticker, so you can get your toddy back at the end of the day, your dolly. But what, what are those white flaps on the back? Is this to let water out but not in? Well, the Aero is designed to be a self draining cockpit. So if any wave comes over the bow, it'll go straight out the back of the boat and go straight out the back. Those flaps are there just in case you go take your weight to the right to the back of the boat for a while. Um, they will just slow down the water coming in. They're not really needed. If the boat was without them, it wouldn't be a big issue. You've got to keep them on because it's in the class rules, but it just keeps it a little bit more watertight when you go right to the back of the boat. And actually having the honeycomb mesh there and the flaps means you don't use your, lose your main sheet out of the back of the boat. A lot of boats where you have a completely open back of the boat, it's self-draining. You'll be throwing your ropes out the back, you'll be trading your spinnaker sheet or your spinnaker halyard, mm -hmm. your main sheet will go out the back, but they keep the main sheet inside the boat. When you go to climb in the boat, oh, I said, oh, it looks like these might be a little bit obstructive if you want to climb in the back. So you push the tiller away, tiller's great for steering, great for changing direction, not so good for climbing on. So push that out of the way, don't use that for climbing on. You put your weight on here, and this might look like a bit of an obstruction, but as soon as you put some weight on the back of the boat, this will come right down to the water level, and you'll be able to kick your legs, climb in, climb up the boat. So sure. you can come in the side of a boat, climbing in here. The boat can come over on top of you quite quickly, so you make sure you're across the wind. Um, if you can grab the main sheet and pull a bit of main sheet in to balance the wind against you, that's good. But it's one hand here on the grab rail, which is a really good handhold for climbing in. As soon as you start coming up, you can get your second hand on the toe strap. And at that point, you've got to move quickly because the boat might start coming over on top of you. And the one thing which I think makes a really big difference to climbing in the boat quickly is a big kick of the legs. So if you can kick the legs and propel, you know, half of your body weight or a quarter of your body weight forwards into the boat, that will take the weight off your shoulders and your arms, make it much easier to climb in. So get used to doing one big kick and then move fast. And it might be that if a boat does come over on top of you, it's no use just stopping here you've actually got to go a little bit to lured. Out all line. Blue rope, RS customer rope kit, out all purchase, four mil with a Dyneema core. And then you just tie a 20 mil block on. Whenever you change rigs, you have to untie the out and the bottom section and untie it through the bottom of the mass. 
because a rig is a sail size and the bottom half of a mast, just like an Ilka laser. Um, and when you untie this and take it out of here, it's very important to tie a knot in the end of the outer hall because it's not inside the boom. It looks great when you're sailing because it's inside the boom and it looks really clean and aesthetically pleasing. But if you lose it inside the boom, it's a 10 minute job to get it out. So always tie a knot in the outer hall when you take it off. A lot of people have made that mistake once and then they remember it after that. <laughs> I made those mistakes so that you don't have to. Well, that's very kind of you. I do. <laughs> so the out hall, the out hall is a four to one system, whereas the down hall is an eight to one system. And because a little bit of length in the out hall makes a really big depth difference in the depth of the sail. You only need to move this, you only need to move this four inches or so, because four inches here will be one inch at the back of the sail, and one inch at the back of the sail is probably all you need to go from a fairly flat sail to a fairly full sail. Because just one inch of moving along the boom gives quite a lot of depth. Yeah. So the fact you only need to move it four inches at a time between on and off means you don't need a take-up system. So this rope is already minimized in length. It's only this long. This is all already as a standard probably a little bit more than you need, you could cut it down further, but there's no need for a bungee take-up system on this, so this is really simple. So we want the lines which you're going to grab to adjust it in the system to be on top of the ones which you don't need to grab. So over the deck controls, take take-ups. And it's only a take-up system, so it's not critical. It just has to work, it doesn't have to be perfect. But it does give every aero owner the scope to put their personal touch to their own boat and a lot of people have got some very elaborate take-up systems and you know what it's not really critical but it does allow them the opportunity to put their mark on a boat and i think every boat owner wants to do that wants to give it a little bit of love and a little bit of individuality so i will minimize the length of the ropes minimize the length of bungee minimize the amount of fittings and minimize the complexity so that just makes it light and simple yeah. the way this normally goes is it goes right at the boat here through the bow and you know this is something every owner could do differently you look around the boats in the dinghy park and you'll find 20 different varieties of this and people can put their own personal mark on their air rope and it'll be theirs when you pull the eight to one downhaul on and off it will pull out all the excess lines so it doesn't all hang in the water or <coughs> tangle around your feet or look into them. so now all this extra line Pulling up the deck spot. That's right, ratchet going on through the ratchet block, forwards through the 40mm Harken block, down through the traveller block, backwards through the front block. These twist at the top so you can get them lined up nicely. If they're not lining up when they're new, just give them a little twist. These ropes going from the boom, they've got um, backing stainless steel washers behind them and diamond knots behind at the back so that you save a lot of weight and fittings, drill, drilling holes in the boom, just by having these tie-ons. And then we'd normally just thread it through the bottom block on the traveller and tie a bowl in like so, get it a little bit smaller. There we go. And now I think we're good to hoist the sail. And by hoisting the sail, we'll have to put the top mast in before we hoist the sail. But by doing that, we can just make sure that everything's about the right length and correct. This gooseneck, as well as having the auto click on, also folds away to be parallel to the mast. Otherwise, I'll get it in, it'll go in really easily as long as it's perfectly straight. And I think the easiest way to get it perfectly straight is to lay it out flat on the boat. And by having it on top of the boat, you get it straight and it just goes in super easily. With the arrows, a two piece main halyard, we have a very thin bit which is stretchy because it's beneath the cleat so we want that to be stretchy to hug the mast all the way down and then the top bit is four mil dyneema so it's non-stretch here's the fair lead which the knot's got to get through so much easier if that end of the rope on double cheek bend is hollow um, it cleats in here and here owns purpose-built um, micro aero branded wind indicator the slots in the top there and it's a little arrow at the top when you lift the mast up, make sure you've got the handy in your hand to keep it tidy. Um, the Beauty Viera mast is carbon, so it's really light, especially the five rig for the little ladies and the young sailors. Um, it is fantastically light. They can beautifully surprise when they go to lift it up. They're used to lifting in 
aluminium masts with the sails on. In the okay. There's a hole at the bottom of the mast, a little four mil hole, and that allows grit to leave the mast. So you've got. That's smart. The so bottom of the mast step is built into the hull moulding so that there's no change in the mast rates in the aeroplast. They match perfectly from the mast step into the moulding of the bottom hull. So there's no difference in mast rate between different boats built in different places in the aero. All built at the same place at this stage. Um, and it's stainless steel at the bottom so it's not going to wear out. Um, if ever in the longness of time this wore out it would be just replace it but it's hard plastic, it's not like to wear out. And with the hole in the bottom, any grit that goes down there, which it does occasionally, especially in standard locations, drains out the bottom. But one there, there's also there's one here. So it's just like this hole. There's a little hole here, which helps the water drain out. Okay. So that's where your water bottle goes. And as soon as you start going and move your weight forward, so all the water will drain out of that hole. And The cruise yeah. Four battens in the RS Aero sail, two are full length, which gives us a square top sail. One of our differences to the laser is we've got a square top sail, and it's one of the things that a laser sail has got to get used to is having a flat headed sail. Um, they all stay in the sail. Our bottom two battens are short length, so it's a soft sail, which means when you get a gust, if you have a, a full length battens on the whole sail, that power is very much off and on as the gust hits you. You can't let the sail flap, you can't stop and let the sail flap. That, Foil safe, but the sail is always on and ready to catch you out. So it's a little bit more forgiving and it's a little bit more adjustable by way of the sailor controls. Oh. And to develop this, a really, really comfortable hiking stance, they went through numerous iterations of a different one. And you've got this, it's actually flat sided, but by having different corners there, it's got three different shapes to it and smooth rounding in between, it gives a really comfortable hiking position. Adding the out hall now, and there's four rigs for the aero class, five, six, seven, and nine. The smaller sails, five, six, and seven, all have a, ta a tassel at the end of a mainsail. And by having that tassel different lengths mean that for one boom and for one out haul rope, all the four sails work on it. Because the nine doesn't have any tassel, but the nine goes nearer to the end of the boom. The five finishes up here or so, but with a long tassel, you can get away with exactly the same out haul and boom with the five as you can with a nine. So it keeps it simple. When you change rigs, it's, uh, it's an easy job. Through there, and the knot just snugs into the bespoke fitting at the end of the boom. And with four mil, it stays in there with friction. We've got a bobble in the end, make a loop, push the loop through the sail, push the bobble through the loop, pull it tight, and we want to try and make sure we pull that really tight so that there's no slack left in it. Because as soon as we pull our eight to one downhaul on, if there's any slack here, that will relate to the sail coming down the mast by that amount. Feed it in there, get ready to hoist. I'll okay, hoist it up. The knot at the top, just back off a little bit and then one decisive pull to get the sail into the top cleat effectively is I pull it all the way to the top, engage the cleat, and with one hand on the front of the mast, one hand out front, to get as wide a angle as possible, like making a crucifix, I go one, two, three, and that to me is probably good to go. There's a mushroom halfway up the mast, ah. where we engage the mushroom, and this is where this stretchy line on the secondary, beneath the cleat comes in. If we just stretch this by just three or four centimeters, one or two inches. Don't pull it too hard because if you pull it too hard, you pull it out of the cleat at the top. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of stretch, Ooh. which means that with a little bit of mass bend, it will stay behind that mushroom. In reality, if you get a lot of mass bend, if it's a windy day and you're using lots of bang and lots of downhaul and bending the mast, it will come off that mushroom. It doesn't matter, it just flaps around a little bit. It's a convenience thing just to make it look good, but it will likely come off on windy days. So with the excess here, not a lot of people know this on their first sail. It took me three or four sails to realise this. But once you've coiled up this main halyard, there's a pocket on the sail. Ah, oh, very good. Look at that, sneaky, sneaky. It took me four sails to spot that. I would have never guessed that. But I've told you, so you don't have to spend four <laughs> sails finding out yourself. <laughs> good, good. So, we've got a little tang here. This mushroom on the front is just a tidying up mushroom, so this would normally go underneath this. Plunks in there, and there's a little mark here which is probably a good setting 
to set that up. That's why the mark's there, because if you get that there, you're going to be about right. So okay. that's a good starter setting. No further than that. And then the cunningham, very easy, slapping it right off. With a knot at the end of a line, it goes through the eye of a sail. I need even more slack. Thread it underneath the webbing and into this groove here. And the friction on the four mil rope will stay in that groove and that's good to go. So very quickly, no knots needing time. Just put the knot into that groove there for the downhaul and into the groove at the end of the boom for the outhaul. Quick rig. Looking good.